Greetings, people. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Disaster Hack. Today we're going to cover the topic of sheltering, and this is a very important function in emergency management that occurs before, during, and even after disasters. For our learning objectives today, we're going to explore why sheltering is an essential function in emergency management. We'll look at the different types of sheltering and housing and try to anticipate the demand for such functions. We'll also suggest some ideas on how we can implement sheltering correctly. Sheltering is pretty straightforward as a concept. It's basically the movement or location or relocation of people to a place of safety and or refuge. So this could include, for example, a bomb shelter during the Cold War or tents to escape a complex emergency in Rwanda. But we'll talk more about uh, those that are more common to emergency management today. There are basically two types of options that we may need to consider in emergency management when it comes to sheltering. First of all is sheltering in place. A really good example of that is a tornado safe room. The second type is more traditional. It's the type of shelter that you see operated by the American Red Cross when a major disaster occurs. There's some really great research by E.L. Quarantelli on sheltering and housing. He basically says that there's four types. First of all, there's emergency sheltering. So this would be an overnight stay at a, the house of a friend or in a hotel or in a church. Then there's temporary sheltering, so this is a community shelter at a school gymnasium or perhaps even at a stadium. There's temporary housing, such as an apartment, if our home is being rebuilt after a disaster. And then, of course, once that home is reconstructed, uh, we can re-enter that, and that is our permanent housing. If we're in charge of emergency management, we may have one very specific question about sheltering. And that is, how many people should I plan for? Well, this is a very difficult question to answer, and research provides different findings on this, ranging from 5% or 20% of the population, or even higher in some cases. But what we do know is that shelter use is more likely in hurricanes, it's more likely to be used in cities, it's more likely to be used when it's publicized, uh, we might anticipate more shelters in larger disasters. Shelter use is more frequent at night. It's often used by those who are poor or lack resources. And it's also used by older individuals. If we're opening a shelter, there are several things we need to keep in mind to do so successfully and effectively. First of all, we need to pick the right location, one that's safe and not vulnerable to hazards. We need to pick one that's large enough to house a large number of residents. And the facility must have water, power, and other services that might be needed after a disaster. In addition, we need to publicize the location so people will know where to go. We need to staff it with Red Cross workers and other volunteers. We may need law enforcement to discourage conflict or help resolve it should it break out. And we may need medical and other personnel who can help victims. In addition, the facility needs food, water, cots, pillows, and blankets. All of this is extremely important. When Hurricane Katrina occurred, the Superdome didn't have many of these things, and those who were in the shelter suffered as a result. There are several other considerations that we need to be aware of. We're going to need restrooms, of course, and we need to be aware of gender identity issues in that regard. We need to make sure that we're caring for the disabled. Keep in mind that the Americans with Disability Act requires us to serve them even in times of disaster. We may need to seek help from the American Red Cross, but we need to keep in mind that some of their workers and volunteers may not be able to help during winter storm Uri in Texas in February of 2021. This was a problem. Volunteers were not able to access the sheltering because of the condition of roads. So we have to keep all of those contingencies in mind. To wrap things up, I want to reiterate that in-place sheltering may be the best option. Evacuating them and moving them to another area could be very dangerous in certain disasters. But in many cases, we'll need to open public shelters 
and they'll be needed when there's major disasters and lots of damage and destruction and loss of infrastructure. These public shelters should have adequate personnel and resources to care for victims. And then of course, opening a shelter is not the only thing we need to do. We need to have a phase out plan, which means combining shelters together or eliminating them altogether. If you're seeking further information about sheltering, I would point you to this article by E.L. Quarantelli, Patterns of Sheltering and Housing in U.S. Disasters. It's an old one, but it's a good one. Of course, you may also get information from the American Red Cross or from your community or your state or even the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.